When you look at the government shutdown, I mean, it's unbelievable that we're here where we were a couple of weeks ago, that we can't really get our act in order in the U.S. to find a, a long-term viable solutions. I mean, what does it mean for businesses? Well, bipartisanship is out the window. When I worked on Capitol Hill and in the White House, bipartisanship was thought to be a good thing, and Democrats who worked with Republicans were thought to be good legislators, and Republicans who worked with Democrats were thought to be good legislators. Now, if you work with people from the opposite party, you're thought to be um, almost a traitor. And so it's unfortunate that we've gotten to this uh, mode. I, I do think we have a problem coming up soon, November 17th. Uh, the U.S. government runs out of money again. So there has to be some solution to that. But I think the international markets are probably getting tired, as the people in the United States, of this perils of Pauline. Every couple of weeks, we can't seem to fund the government, let alone deal with the debt issue. That's a separate problem we've dealt with, for, at least for the next election. Uh, but I do think we, we have a problem in getting the U.S. government to be funded. And I think there's a solution that's being considered now, but there will always be some political challenges to it. And working to, waiting to the last minute to get a solution is never a great thing. But is this because of divisions? And actually, we're seeing divisions almost across the board in every major economy. Because the right. country is split down the middle. Basically, Congress has uh, basically as many Democrats as Republicans almost. So when you're split down the middle, it's hard for one side to say we're going to go to the far right or one side to say that we're going to the far left. And you have to compromise. And if you get into politics and you don't compromise, you don't get very much done. So right now, there's a feeling that compromising is a sign of weakness. But actually, it's a sign of strength, in my view, and I think it'd be a good idea if people would work together, but it's not working that way right now. Is it difficult to do business in the U.S. because of these divisions? I'm also thinking of ESG and, and some of the climate deniers. Well, if a company was run the same way as the U.S. Congress was run, it probably wouldn't be um, getting a lot of shareholders. You can't run a company or a, a government where you're going through a perils of Pauline every couple of weeks. It just doesn't give people a confidence that you know what you're doing. So members of Congress are all well-intentioned. I know many of them. They work very hard, but they raise their money from the far left and from the far right. And therefore, you tend to have people very much di diametrically opposite. You don't raise money down the center saying, I want to do something that's good for the country right down the middle. That's what I'm going to do. That doesn't raise any money. You raise money from the far left and the far right, and members reflect that. Um, David, it's always quite thrilling, actually, for, for you know, a foreigner to follow the U.S. election cycle in the year. What happens it, to, to businesses if uh, President Trump gets elected? Well, predicting uh, a year in advance who is going to be president of the United States is a fool's errand. Generally, if you go back the last 10 presidential elections and say who's going to be president a year in advance, you'd be wrong almost every time. Uh, president Trump had an economy that grew when he was president. It probably grew at about 1.5 uh, percent a year on, an, on average. Uh, President Biden has had to grow 2.6 percent in the first two years, but that reflects the coming out of the COVID situation, and it's probably going to grow 1.7 percent this year. Um, it's, it, usually, when you look at statistics, it turns out that the economy grows the best in the U.S. when the, the government is divided. In other words, divided between the Congress and divided between the president. So it's hard to say, tell me who the Congress is going to be, and who the president is going to be. I can tell you where the economy is likely to be. But in the end, right now, the U.S. economy's biggest uh, concern, I think, and biggest challenge is making certain that we avoid the recession that could come about if interest rates are tightened a bit more. Right now, we've avoided the recession, and hopefully we can continue to do so. But President Biden has actually done quite a lot in terms of legislation and pushing things through. It doesn't, it's not reflected in the polls. He's not getting credit for it. Why? Um, I wish I knew. I don't know. Um, he has used the phrase Bidenomics. It doesn't seem to be a phrase that's catching on and giving him a lot of uh, popular support. But he's done a pretty good job of getting the core of his legislation through. And in fact, virtually almost everything he wanted, he got through. Maybe not in the same size he wanted, but he got a lot uh, done. But, you know, very often in politics, you don't get credit for things. I worked in the White House for Jimmy Carter, and we got more legislation done than anybody ever had done in four years. But he got virtually no credit for it. Um, so, you know, life isn't fair. Politics isn't fair. Um, David, when, when you look at the economy or the markets, they seem to be ignoring a lot of geopolitics. Is this because they don't know how to price it or because they, they're discounting it? Well, the geopolitics of what's going on around the world right now? Yeah, China, U.S., right. Israel, Gaza. Um, nobody really knows uh, what's going to happen in Israel, Gaza, or what's going to happen in Russia, Ukraine, mm -hmm. what's going to happen in China, Taiwan. No one knows for certain. So you have to factor in some uncertainty factors. I think all investors now have geopolitical experts trying to tell them, here's what's likely to happen, and here's how you can take account of it in your investments. But in the end, you're, mm -hmm. you're making a guess, and nobody really knows. I think having a lot of wars go on at the same time, or potential mm -hmm. wars, gives people uncertainty. What business people want is certainty and predictability. And right now, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lack of predictability. But, and you said you don't believe in decoupling between China and the U.S. Do you believe in deglobalization? 
And actually, there's, there's going to be more inward looking from the major economies. Deglobalization is a nice phrase, but it's unrealistic. At this okay. point, uh, economies are so interconnected, it's not realistic any no. longer to talk about globalization being uh, go going away. It's just not no. realistic, in my view. You might be able to modestly make some changes, but right now the United States is, is buying roughly $500 billion more or less of products and services mm -hmm. from China, and we're selling roughly 150 to $170 billion, and that's not going to change very much over the next year or two, in my view.